Um, but what they do is every Saturday night, there's, uh, they serve the LGBTQ community, uh, homeless teenagers, 21 and under. And these are kids that are living on the street or in the shelter. <coughs> and so every Saturday night, this space is open for them to come and just be free to be who they are and um, to have a nice meal. Um, so I'm starting up a yoga program for them. Um, and so I'm there volunteering every Saturday night. And we just started last night. First, first day of the class. Pretty intense. Yeah. I had um, 70 mats uh, donated. 70. 70, yeah. How many students did you um, have? There's usually about 70 or kids that will come on a given Saturday night. And these are all teenagers. They're, they're you know, and a lot of them, a lot of, a lot of them are like in the transgender community, um, you know, gay community. Some of, you know, most of them, that's the, the community that they service. And a lot of these kids are kids that have been, you know, kicked out of their homes because of who they are, you know? It's kind of sad, you know, they just come from really kind of harsh backgrounds. And so it's just, you know, a place for them to be and um, just be taken care of and loved and, you know. Um, so anyway, I'm mentioning it because, um, we're always in need of volunteers if you ever want to go on a given Saturday night. And also, they're in need of clothes for these kids. So if you have clothes that you're wanting to get rid of, speaking of clearing out and cleaning out, or you have like toiletries, like, um, you know those like little sample toiletries, like little sample shampoos and suits and uh, soaps and things like that, they love that, you know? Um, and Termina was there with me like a week ago. And um, what we do is like we, we set up this, the, the kids come like around 6.45, and they're there from 6.45 to like 9 o'clock on Saturday night. And so we set up this room with like all these clothes and stuff like that that have been donated. And then they just come in, and they go through it, and they can take whatever they want. Um, and it's really cool. And then we serve them dinner from like 8 to 9. And that's about it. So, um, so if you so next weekend, for example, if you have anything that you want to um, that you're willing to part with, that you're not with anymore, um, bring it here uh, next weekend, um, and I will take it with me. Okay. Gene Marie does as well too. But like we don't often introduce it in the teacher training. 
training, but I just felt like it. <laughs> I just felt like doing it today. So just to give you a different perspective and, um, and also just allow you to move freely, a little bit more freely today without having to beat so much in your head thinking about <coughs> what you're doing. Um, what did that open up for you in terms of your, your body, your, your experience of the poses and practice? Did it feel different? Okay, so felt more ease of flow, but also much more of a tendency to push through your edge. Like I found yeah. myself catching myself a couple times, like, ooh, like mm. not paying as close attention or going a little too far. Mm. Yeah, okay. It was good practice in that way. Yeah. Okay, good. I appreciate the time. It's okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. me personally helped me just be very focused on um, like when you were saying to visualize yourself before like doing the suryas I think having that emphasized because we tend to just do things hastily and just really focusing on the transitions like you emphasized beforehand and it's like I know I need to do these things every class but I think having that you know just verbally emphasized before we started practicing I felt like I got really just a lot more focused and deeper into everything we were doing and broke that sweat that you know you were saying yeah. that's so detoxing. So I think everything just that you talked about really manifested in the practice. Good. I appreciated that. Good. Yeah. So um, yeah and actually the the way that you were going in and out looked really good today. Like the way that, because of you know I had brought your attention deliberately to the transitions that you were making in and out and doing numerous transitions with you in and out of different positions and get you to really focus on how you're doing those transitions, you know? Because oftentimes we will injure ourselves or hurt ourselves in the transition in and out of the pose versus in the pose itself. So a lot of times it's the transitioning 
that is the, the trickiest bit. And this is why we've been so specific with you in terms of what poses you link or connect together. So when you're doing more of a sort of rhythmic flow style class, you want to make sure that the poses that you're connecting together really connect together in a way that makes the transitions very smooth and less of a risk to, to injury. Um, so, and you can, you can feel it because I put in a kind of a wonky transition that's always done, warrior one to warrior two. And when you do, like for some of you, you might be like, well, it really doesn't feel like that big of a transition. But for a lot of people, it, it is. And, and also, when you understand, as you have more now, that front leg, it goes from being neutral to external. So really making that happen and, and, and coming from a neutral to an external pose takes a lot of thoughtfulness in, in, in doing that. Um, so, you know, that's why we don't do those kinds of transitions very often. And if we do do them, we do them in more of an advanced class, right? So, um, okay, cool. Uh, all right, so let's look at the page 189, the overview of twists there. Um, there's very minimal seated twists that are given to you in the manual. Um, I did some other ones with you today. Like we did, uh, what was the twist that we did at the very beginning? Seated twist. Like it's Sukhasana, right? So we just we did Sukhasana to eat with a twist. So there's multiple seated twists. In your manual, they're only giving you um, like three, really. And there are these here, Maritasana, Ardhamati, Andrasana, and Bharadvajasana. So those were three that we did at the end. Um, they have Jatara Parivartanasana in there, but Jatara Parivartanasana is a, is a supine twist. You're lying down. It's one that we always do with the knee bent to the side. The more advanced version of that is with the legs straight out to the side. And it's much more of a um, abdominal strengthening, you know, uh, pose uh, than anything. So, um, so when you did standing twists with uh, Jean Marie, did you talk about the benefits of twists? Some of the main alignment principles of twists, so like what are they? What do you remember in terms of some of the basic benefits of twists or main alignment principles of twists? They release tension um, and they, they squeeze your internal organs, they sort of work against toxins and then hence blood flow. Okay, yeah, so, right, so it's a, they have sort of a ringing out kind of um, quality, right, literally. Um, and can you feel that when you do, when you do the, the twists, right? So, um, yes, you're affecting, as we said at the very beginning, there's a lot of major organs that are in this area. So twisting is um, really beneficial to um, on many of those organs there, but, but especially like the intestine, the intestinal area, you know, um, which tends for many people as well as, you know, many of the other organs to be a little congested. Um, so it's, and it's also very beneficial for the discs in the spine, right? Um, because when we twist and when we do any kind of movement to the spine, what's happening to the discs? Okay, they're compressing, but so why is that beneficial? Oh, so what? Oh, because they're spongy and they're kind of taking blood flow, is flowing through, or they're kind of getting, I can't remember, she was saying they were spongy. Yeah, they're spongy, yeah, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> so like, so they have like a gelatinous kind of like, right, so the, the squeezing effect that occurs through twisting when, you, when you're compressing or when you're or back bending or things like that, what about that is really beneficial? Lubrication. Yes, it's a lubrication, right? There's a lubrication that occurs and, um, and fluid, fresh fluid, fresh blood is allowed to enter into the area which is really important, right? Um, <coughs> so a certain amount of compression to the vertebrae of the, of the spine is actually really healthy and really beneficial. 
So I don't want you to think compression bad, right? Because sometimes we think that compression bad, we don't want to compress. But actually, in actuality, a certain amount of compression is necessary and does happen naturally when you do some of these positions. It's actually good for the spine, okay? Um, what else? What else do you remember in terms of twists? That you should twist from the navel, and like it's your thoracic spine that should be twisted, yes. and not your lumbar because it has very limited range yes. of motion. Yes, huge, hugely important. Okay, so um, so your thoracic spine. I love this little like bag skirt, or, like whatever this. What is this represent? The diaphragm. Oh, the diaphragm. <laughs> Shouldn't it be up here, like hanging, like dropped? <laughs> um, okay, so. Yeah, so your thoracic spine, right? It, is that's where you should be twisting from, which is like the largest part of the spine here. So it's the approximate beginning is like at the navel and moves all the way up. It's the harder part of the spine to, to move. It has it's the least flexible part. The least flexible part of the spine is your thoracic spine, right? The more the two most flexible parts of the spine are your cervical spine and your lumbar spine, right? There's much more range of motion there. So wherever you have a huge range of motion, what else do you have? A huge amount of instability, right. So you should definitely put those two things together. Wherever you have a huge range of motion, you have a huge range of instability that can occur. So with twisting, this is, this is really vital because where will you have a huge range of motion? <coughs> in your hips and in your lower back, in your sacrum, lumbar spine, and hips, right? So also then a huge range of instability. Where do you have a huge, uh, where do you have a lack of a lot of movement? In your thoracic spine. Okay, so it's normal that this part of the body is gonna wanna shift around a lot when you're trying to twist. It's much easier, everybody, in seated twists to not move this part of the body because it's fixed on the floor. Do you know what I mean by that, right? So here, you know, I take a twist like this and you know, this is fixed on the floor now. So it's a little easier to control and stabilize because it's fixed on the floor. As soon as I get into a twist like this, I have so much more range of motion, right? Because my pelvis is now not fixed. What now has to fix my pelvis? The core muscles. Right? You have to stabilize so much more with your core muscles in order to not um, you know, manipulate too much into your sacrum and into your lumbar spine. So the seated twist, um, even though they're harder in a certain respect, are easier in the respect that you've got a little bit more grounding and stabilization to your pelvis because it's fixed on the floor. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and you also, with the seated twist, have much more leveraging ability than you do with some of the standing twists. Do you know what I mean by leveraging ability? Did you read that section in Donna Farmey's book about leverages, or is that for this week? Did you read that already? I think we read that already. Not? Okay. So you might be, that might be for this week, but she has a whole section on internal and external leverages. And there are certain poses, like, what's, like, an external leverage, like, for example, um, and I have my arm here. This is an external leverage. My arm against my leg and my leg against my arm to help me leverage, literally, myself further into the chest, okay? Then you have something called internal leverages, which is more the, the deeper musculature and the breath that is taking you into the twist. But many of us just use force of the external leverage, like holding onto your feet and pull, 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 right? A lot of us just use that external leverage and force to take us into a pose and we don't consider the internal leverage of the breath <coughs> and muscles and other parts that are also helping to facilitate the movement. Um, and this is really important in twists because it's so easy to destabilize here. We have to really be careful that we're not pushing so much with the external force of the arms and things like that. So like, we did twisted half moon pose today. Hard Rita Artist Strauss. How hard is that? It's hard, right? What makes that hard is like multi-faceted, but multi-level. But one thing that makes it really hard is you have no leverage. Right? You know you know you have no external leverage. 
it's like you've got a hands like on the floor or on a block and then you're like twisting. So can you feel how much how how much strength is required to come into that twist? Right? So you have some twists that are a little freer and more opening, and some twists that are a little require much more strength. It's kind of like we were talking about in the back bends. You have back bends that are more strengthening back bends and back bends that are more opening back bends. Do you remember that conversation? So like some of these standing twists just require much more core strength to come into them, whereas a supine or a seated twist doesn't necessarily require a whole lot of core strength to come into. They're, they're much, you can get much more of an opening of the twist. Can you feel that Do you, difference a little bit? You're just shaking your head because you're just wanting to agree with me or you're not really present or you understand. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Good. That's good. That's honesty, right? Okay. Good. So, can you feel the difference in a standing twist, the amount of core strength that it requires to come into, as opposed to, um, so you might not get as much of like an open feel of that twist, but you get really a sense of the strength required from the muscles to take it into the twist versus a seated twist or a lying down twist where it's like you can get much more into the opening of the twist. Do you have that experience? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now you're all with me, right? So remember we're talking about being present to the fact that you're not even present. Right? It's like a your mind is open. Oh, right? It's Sunday. Uh, yeah, how many more weeks do we have left? And when is my exam? That's, yeah, I hear what's going on in your heads, some of you. Right? Okay. All right. So so these are the three twists that you have like in the in your manual, but there's lots of other seated twists. Okay, but these are sort of the foundational basic seated twists that we have. So um, can we just read through these alignment principles at the top here? Just go around the room, okay? Um, let's let's start. Uh, let's start here, okay? Cecilia, let's start that first bullet point, and then we'll just go around alignment. Principles. Maintain stability in pelvis and legs. Keep the hips square and curve to the Except in cases of problems and more back pain. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, so like why would that, okay, so it's, it seems contradictory now what they just said, right? So it says maintain stability in pelvis and legs. Keep the hips square in the pelvis level as in you know, if you twist, that's what you want to do, right? So you're not like twisted with katasana, right? Twisted chair pose, doing this to come into the twist. This stays square and it stays stable and you're just moving here. But now they're saying, except in the cases of disc problems and lower back pain. What do you mean? What does that mean? When discs aren't herniated, So what this also means is that there's always exceptions to the rule. <laughs> okay? Nothing is nothing is written like even though it's like black and white print that you see here, and you, when you oftentimes when we see black and white print, we're like, oh, that's that's like you know that's it. There's no there's no adjusting or room for movement. That's not true. There's always exceptions to the rule. Okay? So yeah. But as a follow up to that, I'm curious like when should you be working to stabilize? Like, what would be the indication if you're not, let's, let's say you don't come to class diagnosed, right? Mm -hmm. When should you be working to stabilize that? And when should you know that it's okay for you to actually work in more open form? How, what would be some of the clues? Back pain after twisting or? Yeah, that's a good, yeah, good question. Um, I would say yes to that, like that pain back pain after twisting and also while you're in it. Like if you if it just doesn't, you know, feel um, uh, good in your back, you know. Um, but you know, I would say that like you have as with every pose everybody. 
There's always going to be exceptions to the rule, and everybody's body is designed very, very differently. And you just have to really be mindful and really pay attention to, you know, how you are in the pose, and you know where you can get the freest breath, and where you can um, allow there to be a, a balance of just stability and movement in the pose. Um, yeah. Um, well, I, I have a, like a really slight lateral herniation, yeah. and it happened up yesterday, and I was really nervous. I'm like, we're going to do all this in four times. Yeah, uh-huh. Um, but what I, when I, today, I did it for so long, and um, it was just, instead of, and I actually feel so good yeah. now. Yeah, okay, good. It's just, everything was just up.
Yeah, so the whole thing with the neck, that's also really important in twists, is that a lot of us, because we have more range of motion here in the neck than we do in the thoracic spine, so you see a lot of people go into the twist and they're like about this much degree in the thoracic spine and then they're like, <laughs> you know, it's like the whole head and the neck is like, you know, it's like the exorcist or something. You know? Um, so you want to make sure that your head and your neck is only turning to the degree that the rest of your spine is turning. So you don't want to take the head past the degree that, or the neck that, that you're, you know, otherwise you're just going to be straining in all these muscles here. Okay? All right, good. Um, okay, so let's just look at a couple of these. So flip, flip through here. Um, page 191, that's Jatara Prevartanasana, the full position. We usually do that with the knees then, right? It's more of an abdominal um, strengthening pose. Okay, 193, Radhajasana. Okay, can everybody say that? Radhajasana. Radhajasana. It's the name of a, a lot of these poses are named after um, mythological characters in um, Hindu mythology. Um, so it's the name of a sage, Bharat Bajasana. I don't really know his story. Do you know his story? No, I don't know his story. I don't know what his story is. Um, Bharat Bajasana. Okay. So this is the pose that we did towards the end. And I actually, instead of having you hold. Instead of you having, like, how do you hold the, the elbow? I just had you hold, because that's really hard. I just had you hold here to the top of the, the hip and the thigh. But yeah, that's, but now I want you to just notice, like, the width of the shoulder, because this is also really important to everybody. And a lot of you, when you're in these twists, is, you know, this shoulder is actually pulling forward. That's what I was talking about, is to make sure that your shoulder blade and your shoulder isn't pulling <coughs> around this way that you keep this broad, almost like that, almost has like a sensation of a back bend in a sense, as you're coming into the twist. Um, this doesn't even look like he's twisting there. It's more weird in the picture. Um, okay, and then flip over 195. This is just another variation of Roger Delsman, like in a half lotus. In this pose, in, in this pose, you know for sure, really. Yeah, yeah, I, she's saying she tore her meniscus in this, in this position. Um, I'm not a big fan of these lotus positions. Like, I just don't really teach them. I think that it's really, um, it's very, you know, it's a rare person that can do it without really putting the pressure in the knee. You know, your hips have to be really open to a certain degree. Um, so this is like one leg in half for us and one leg in, in uh, half of this. So that's, that's a pretty advanced variation, okay, so that twist. Um, and then flip over, so these are a little bit simpler. So you have Arda Matsya so let's say that. Arda, Arda. 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 So this is half Lord of the Fishes pose. <laughs> I never ever say that in my class. I never say half or the other just pose. I just say half seat is spinal twist. I don't even know where that came from. Like half seat is spinal twist. Like just spinal twist. Like um, what's so full Lord of the fish? Hmm? What's full Lord of the Fishes pose? Um, good question. I don't know. There is no full Lord of the Fishes pose. It's just half. He's only half. He's only half Lord and half fish. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. When you do both sides, yeah. There is okay, so there is a there there is a bind in a lot of these twists, as I mentioned, right? That this pose has a bind to it. A lot of these twists have binds to it. But we're gonna look at some of these twists like a little bit later and why and who and how would somebody bind and just looking at the length of your torsos, like relative to your leg, like if you look at when I bend my knee, okay, and you just like look at the shape of my body, my torso, my knee is practically in my mouth, okay, because my legs are so long and my torso is really short. So when I have my leg really tight in like this, sitting on the floor, and I come into it, so this is really hard for me because I'm, you know, because I'm all like leg, right? So I actually have to really sit up 
to elevate with so that now I have more room and freedom. Do you see how that is, everybody? Yeah. So those of you that have very similar shape to me, in a lot of these twists, you've got to really be propped up so that, you know, you're not eating your legs as you're like coming into the twist. And then just, you know, it's really, really hard to get length and, and not compress that degree, okay? So, um, all right, so we'll look at that a little bit more closely, okay? And then flip the page. You've got um, Mari Chasana C. Um, they're doing, they're showing you this with the bind, okay? And it's in parentheses three, because in the, um, in Ashtanga, they use the alphabet A, B, C, D for the variations of these poses, and in Iyengar, they use numerology, one, two, three. You notice that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So like we have Prasarita Padasanasana, A, B, C, D, okay? Um, and that's just kind of, they, they're, I don't know why, the, but it's like they use alphabetical in Ashtanga, numerology, and Iyengar. And um, so that's why it says Marichas in three, or C is like interchangeable, okay? Yes. And interestingly enough, this is why like none of this really you can't think logically about these things, right? <laughs> Because this is the easiest of the sequence. There is A, B, C, and D, Marichasana A, Marichasana B, C, and D in Ashtanga. And this is the easiest of that sequence. And you would think, well, A, it's the first one, shouldn't it be the easiest? And no, it's not. Um, so Marichasana A is a forward bend. So you're here, and this arm wraps around the new pole. You know that pose? Mm -hmm. That's Marichasana A, forward bend. Marichasana B is this leg now comes into half lotus. So this leg stays bent, like it is. This leg comes up into half lotus, and then you wrap the arms around and then you forward bend. So just imagine, just visualize me in that pose. Visualize, <laughs> I'm visualizing myself, okay? And then, then that's Marichasana C, and then Marichasana D is the same thing. Leg bend, this leg is in half lotus, and then you twist and bind. It's extremely yeah. hard. Yeah, right, and that's all, that's all in the Ashtanga, right? So we don't, um, those are really, they're really advanced. Uh, and then you also have that Johnny Shoshasana, the John Jean we talked about that the other day, the ABCD, ridiculous variations in Johnny Shoshasana. She did them? No, she didn't. Oh, she didn't talk about them? I was like, she did. Um, <laughs> oh. But she okay. didn't say anything about ABCD. ABCD, yeah. So the Johnny Shoshasana that we have for you in the manual is, more basic variation of Johnny Shoshasana because you have, uh, I did a variation a little differently with you and Johnny Shoshasana today that was more geared towards a twist. Okay, so there is a rotation in Johnny Shoshasana in the upper or back and the upper body as well as the forward bend. Um, how was that variation? Arm behind and then coming across. Yeah, yeah, it's nice actually. Um, okay. So there it is. Okay, so again, I want you to just like notice the uprightness in the torso and how broad the shoulders are, okay? Because um, again, something that I want to really look at a lot of you is like, when you're coming into this, just the pulling of this arm and the shoulder across, you want to you know, really avoid doing that. You're not like pulling the, sh I see, I saw a lot of you kind of doing that. Do you notice? Yeah, that correct. Much, yeah, you're correcting a lot of them, yeah, okay. Um, all right, good. So that's it in terms of the seat Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. What is the cause of closing the beginning where we're in a line and it's just a simple? Yeah. Okay, so that little, that sort of twist that I did in the lunge at the beginning, it's just a modified variation of Prakrita Parshvakanasana, okay. twisted side angle pose. Okay. It's a beginner's variation of Prakrita Parshvakanasana, twisted side angle pose. Do you know what I'm talking about? The beginning, the we did a, I did, we did a lunge at the beginning of class, and I had to keep the hand on the inside of the foot and twist. So it's just a very simple variation of twisted side angle pose, like a beginner twist, really, of that pose variation. Okay. Um, all right. 
So let's uh, let's look at a couple of these. Just can we grab um, a couple of maps? Maybe just two to put in the center here. Okay, who have we yet to look at in a post? Okay, Shira and who else? Oh my gosh, Jen, how can we And Shira, how can we have forgotten you? What's that, in anatomy? That's all right. That's all right, okay. So can you both come into these, like, let's look at these see the twists, okay? We're uploading. And as we're looking at them, we'll sort of break down the post a little bit, okay? So, yeah, so let's dagger a little bit. Yeah, let's have one other person. Who else have we not really looked at? This is Okay, Daniel. Oh, okay. All right, so make sure, everybody, that you can be, so if you're sitting here, come come more over here so you can be on the this, on this sides, okay? And you can all face up, but yes. Okay, stretch your legs out. Okay. So now, G, when you talk about in the seated poses being propped up onto a blanket or a cloth or whatever. Okay, so now, as they're sitting, just in Dandasana, okay, so being on the side so that you can really see kind of how they are. How are you going to determine whether somebody in a seated posture needs to be up on a blanket? How, what are you looking for? If they're curled in the spine, yeah. how they forward. What part of the spine primarily? Uh, from, from the pelvis, lower back. Yeah, okay. All right, good. So if you're looking at these three lovely ladies right now, do any of them appear as if they would need to be seated up onto a blanket? Yes. Mm -hmm. I would say yes to these two. Yeah. yeah. Not so much. Jen, Jen looks pretty okay, actually. Because part of what I'm looking for, everybody, before we even have them sit up, yeah, just take a look. Okay. Can you... Um, Dan Dan and uh, Shira, put your hand to your uh, sacrum. Hand to your sacrum. Can you feel for yourself? Put both your hands there. And can you feel for yourself? And can you see when they put their hands there on their sacrum how the sacrum is dropping back and down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I want you to both try to do right now is lift your sacrum up. Yes. And get into a natural curve in your lower back. Okay, better. Okay, but this is what's missing as they're sitting here. Too. Can you see that? Can you go back to where you were? Yeah, so a lot of people, a lot of people need to be lifted because you'll, what you'll see is the sacrum actually drops down and the lumbar curve is lost. And you're actually not on what? The sit bones. Because that's the foundation. All of the seated poses, what's the foundation? So the sit bones, it's just like all the standing poses, the foundation is the feet. All seated poses, foundation is the sit bones. Okay, so let's sit them up a little bit. Okay. All right, good. And let's just see. So when you sit onto a blanket, how are you sitting? No, pull, keep it full of the other. Oh, you're just holding it neater. Okay. Okay, and then stretch your legs back out. So what portion of the blanket are you sitting on? How are you sitting? Yeah, more towards the edge. You don't want to sit, be sitting back in like in a chair. Like when you sit down in a chair, you don't want to just kind of sit back, right? That's not very useful <laughs> for your posture. So you actually want to be a little bit more forward in the blanket so that you can do what? What are they, What are you wanting them to do? Anterior. To be able to get more of an anterior tilt to the pelvis as they're sitting. Does that look like from your vantage point? Can you see them? So stand up and then look. You can't see if you're all the way over here. You're not even going to be able to see yeah. them. Yeah, sure. Does it look like they are able no, to be no, more? Shira has come to the edge. Okay, so come a little bit more towards the edge, Dan Dan. Shira, a little bit more to the edge. Okay. Does it look like they're able to lift their safety now a little bit more and have more curve in their low back? How many people say yes? Mm -hmm. Just raise your hand. How many people say yes? Wow, the majority of you aren't convinced. Okay, why? She can be higher. Yeah, Dan Dan needs to be higher. They both need to be higher. Okay, good. <laughs> I feel like she needs to just untuck her booty flesh, though. Like, I'm looking at Shira, and I feel like I just want to, like, sit yeah. her out a little bit. <laughs> Maybe, but not so that, that, that may help, but not, yeah. not totally, okay? Let's sit them up. You always use them like a Yeah. So, this might be the case yeah. for them, but my question is, is, like, is this going to be, like, 
I'm in the I'm in the same boat too, right? Yeah. Like, but, but like, are there eventually when they do the practice more, will they be able to have a, a tilt that's without? I maybe, guess, maybe. Yeah. I know there's no hard press pull, but it just seems. Yeah, like, maybe. Like, maybe. Yeah. yeah, there's there. Yeah, hopefully that may, that may be the case. Yeah. So now how does it? Better. 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 Okay. She, she could be she could be sitting forward a little more. A little more. Maybe she, that's good. Okay. Good. So um, the thing that won't change, though, deep, is like something that I just showed you that we're going to now look at when we come into more test the C, is now the length here relative to the to the leg. Okay, this for me is just not going to change. I'm always going to have to sit up onto support to properly come into these twists so that I don't hurt my back. Right, that's just the structure of my of my body. That's just not going to change. But there are some things that we can change. So, for instance, this could be just you know just tightness in the hamstrings or the buttock muscles or whatever that's not enabling them to do that. Okay. All right. So let's look at this next piece now. Okay. So, so Jen looks good. Everybody satisfied with Jen not being on support? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You sure you're confident about that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So go ahead and bend your right knee, all of you. Okay, so for Mari Chas and a C, we come into this twist, and it's gonna vary method to method. So like, I can't remember, in Ashtanga, they bring the foot really close to that straight leg, and in Iyengar, they take it further away, I think, yeah, okay. So again, depending on sort of methodology and practice, in Ashtanga, they actually, I think, have this like a little bit closer, and the leg is actually coming all the way across like this to come into the twist. We, we're not really, we're not doing that. We're going a little bit in between, okay? So it's not like really wide, but it's also not really close. So you're lining up your foot a little bit more with that sit bone. So take your foot a little bit further out, sure. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you have space in between that straight leg and the bent leg, okay? So yeah, so your foot is more in line with your hip with your sit bone. Okay, good. So now bring your right hand behind your back. When you bring the right hand behind your back, how far uh, on the floor? On the floor. How far? Okay. So now just have a look what's happening now with Shira and Van Dam. Okay, when they take their hand back. Now they're really elevated, so they may need a block for their hands. Okay? So this is another thing that you have to keep in mind is that a lot of people aren't going to be able to reach the floor if they're really elevated with that hand as it comes back. Okay? Good, okay, so I'm gonna actually turn this, and I want you to turn, turn your hand this way, and bend your elbow, so you take your elbow out of the way, yes, okay. And you can actually, you know, bring it here, yeah, bend your elbow a little bit, good. Okay, so the hand is not there to lean back into, okay? It's just there as an extra support, all right? So go ahead and lift your left arm up, and then exhale and twist, bend the elbow, and take the arm to the outside of your leg. Me. Okay, good. So what I want you to just look at right now, everybody, okay, is the distance, okay, I want you to look at the height of their leg relative to their torso, okay? So how much space there is between that this this armpit and shoulder and this leg, okay? So can you see how close she is? Okay? Can you see how far away she is? Okay, how far away she is. Okay, what is now? Okay, so just so stay here. Don't stress in the twist. Okay, what disadvantage does she have now? Not by being propped up. It's not a disadvantage of not being able to get her sit bones because she can't. She can. But what is what's the disadvantage that she's after right now? It's hard for her to get that length up. Can you feel how this is hard for you mm -hmm. to twist? Can you see? Okay, it's hard for her to get the space. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Because what's the first thing that you want to do is inhale in, like get space, space, go up. Go, yeah, it's hard. It's hard for her to get that space. So she's kind of jammed in there now a little bit. And then rotate and twist once you've got that space. Okay, good. All right, and then come back around. Okay, so I'm now going to lift you up. Okay, and let's see what happens for her. Okay, switch over to the other side. Switch your other leg. So I'm going to actually put you on two. Blanket. So do you see what I'm doing here? I'm, I'm looking, I'm having you 
look at the reason why somebody would sit on a blanket if they're posteriorly tilted, and why someone would sit on a blanket in her case that doesn't have that problem or issue sitting on her sit bones, but now it's just a matter of like the proportion of her choice of choice. Are you seeing that? It's not going to enable her to get very far in the chest. If you have a very long torso and you have trouble putting the elbow to the thigh, then the variation would just be to extend the arm. Yeah. Because for me, I find that when I try to connect, mm -hmm. I end up rounding. My yeah. spine is very long, but my limbs are shorter. Right, exactly, which is part of yeah, what's going on with her too, okay? But let's just say that we wanted to, you know, because that won't allow you to get through. Let's, let, let's say we wanted to work a little bit further into the twist, okay? Um, so to avoid having to do that, then we'll just lift her. But even that. lifted, I can't get to my thigh without rounding. Well, you, there's going to be a little bit of that maybe, but okay, so let's see, let's see what happens on this side. Okay, so go ahead and bring the left arm behind you, and then inhale the right arm up, and then exhale and twist. Yeah, good. Okay, good. Can you see the freedom that she has now in her spine a little bit more? Can you feel that, Jen? Okay, so now, to address what you were just talking about, what's gonna happen now a little bit more for her is, yes, because She's now having to reach, put her elbow there. She's now going to pull the shoulder and shoulder blade around and sort of round a little bit. So let's take her to here, okay? Much better variation. Can you feel the freedom of that? Okay, now she's able to really concentrate on where the twist needs to be concentrated in, which is in the upper back. That's good. And then for all of you draw your shoulders back more. Okay, so good. Don't pull the leg across your torso. Though. Be really careful that when you've got the arm there, you're not pulling the leg across. Keep the leg where it is. Yeah, that's it. Are you pulling it back? Yeah, that's it. Put your arm here instead. Okay, so for some of you, it may be a better choice for today not to cross your arm over because of, of you know, okay, come on back to the center. Um, because Again, what happens is if there's a, a discrepancy just in terms of length of torso to length of arm that's causing you to reach and then pull, then that's not useful. You, it, you're, it's more useful to just wrap your arm around the leg like this. Does everybody get that? Because then what you're going to do is you're going to strain your back. You're going to strain the muscles in your back and you strain your spine. Make sense? Yeah? Okay, good. Um, all right. Let's look at, okay, do you have any questions about this twist? Do you have questions about what we just looked at? Okay, this is really just to kind of see like the different profit props that you would use, why you would use them and the purpose, different purpose for her than her, okay? Yeah. Um, so kind of as a generalization, if someone is doing a twist and they're rounding, and yeah. if you're like trying to stretch them and help them and make them if they're still rounding, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be one thing, um, or it could just be that they they need to be like lifted up a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. You know, that's causing that. Okay. I really feel like most people in these poses need to be up, elevated. You know, especially for the twist, seated twists. Okay, for that purpose. Okay, rather than the purpose here. Okay. Any other questions with that? Okay. Is there something specific that you wanted to look at that you're really noticing? Uh, Somebody specific in, in these seated twists that you want to look at that you're adjusting or? Laura? Laura? Laura. Okay. Can you do that? Okay, Laura, and let's take two more. Let's take two more. Okay, um, thanks, ladies. What about Valerie? Can Valerie? You long torso? Yeah, okay, Valerie, Laura, and who else can we look at? There's somebody, who was it? Nisha or Olgu? It was like, who did I see was like, that was really pulling? Oh, that was you. Okay, let's look at you. All right, so take away the blankets and the props. Let's, I want you to tell me now who needs what. Yeah. So, earlier in the conversation, you said that when you look at the distance between your outfit and your knee, yeah. if it is close, then you should do the lot. Then you can possibly. 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 Okay, but not at the expense of. Not at the expense of your back. Yeah. 
It's a very rare, it's like a very rare few that makes you that. Yeah, because it's like there's so many reasons, you know, so many factors to what would make that <coughs> possible without straining the back or straining the shoulder. So really, beginner class, everybody should be on blankets. Oh yeah, absolutely. In a beginner class, everybody should be on blankets, and everybody should be doing that twist with the arm is wrapped, like the arm just like like this. Or and, oh, you know, I did this with you first. This is more this this. <clears throat> this is an open variation of Maritasana C. When I say open, okay, so this is another thing. You, we have op what we call open twists and closed twists. Did Jean Marie talk about that distinction? For a woman that's pregnant, she wants to do open twists, not closed twists. So closed twists would be going towards the leg. Open twists would be going away from the leg, so there's more space. So this is also a good variation for a beginner, more of an open, Twist versus a closed twist. Are we going to say something here? Like oh, okay. All right, so I want you to tell me what they need. Okay, so look at their bodies very closely from the side. Okay, and based on how they're sitting on their sit bones and based on their lower back and their sacrum, who needs to sit up based on that? Laura. Laura. Laura and Manisha. Yeah. Okay. And Tori looks okay. Valerie. No. Valerie. God, what is it up with these names? Why am I so returning to the names? Okay. So Nisha and Laura need blankets based on that. Okay. All right, good. So let's give them blankets. Let's give them two. I usually sit up two though because I'm I feel super so tight on your flexors. So okay. I feel like I'm like okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's actually structural. For yeah. 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 Some of it can be structural. Some of it can be overused and overworked, and some of it can be structural. Okay. So let's not sit you up just for now. Let's not sit you up just for now. Okay. I just want to just to see the shape. Okay. All right. So now, somebody should go ahead and sit up onto the blankets. Okay. So where are you wanting to sit on the blankets again? A little bit more forward. Okay, now look at their backs and look at where they're sitting on their sit bones. Is that, do you look satisfied? Are you satisfied where they are? Yeah. Put your hands on your sacrum. Put your hands on your sacrum. Good, now is your sacrum dropping down? Okay, lift your sacrum up. Lift your sacrum up and then tilt your pelvis forward. You can feel a natural curve in your lower back. Okay, is that better? Yes, everybody? No. Did that change? I think, yeah, they need to come. Okay, maybe, but you can't see from here. You have to look on the side. Look at what's happening on the side. You can't see from the front. You did look from the side. Okay. Okay. So, okay, so what you want, when you sit somebody up on the blankets, just because you sit them onto the blankets doesn't mean that you're going to see the natural curve. Doesn't mean you're going to see that they're sitting on their sit bones or that natural curve just because you sit them up on the blankets. You're still going to have to instruct them to do what? Lift. Lift. Answer lift. lift what? Lift the sides of the waist in this, and lift the sacrum in and up. Lift the sides of the waist up so there's a natural curve to their lower back. You still have to instruct them to do that because just because they sit on the blanket, you'll see beginners. You just prop them up to the blanket and they're still like, yeah, exactly. So you still have to instruct, okay? All right, ladies, go ahead and bend your right knee in. Let's take the same pose. So right hand behind you. And, okay, so now Laura can touch the floor. Pretty much, yeah? Touch the floor. yeah well, I choose long. her because she's got a very long arm. She's got long arms. She's, she's, like, long arm. she's like me. She's like, yeah, look, she's almost so. eating her knee. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, yeah. all the way. Right, she's like me, right. It's my friend. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, like, so her hand, even though she's sitting up because her arms are so long. And so this is really great, everybody, to just look at poses like this, just the different shapes of people. And then you look at Manisha, and poor little Manisha there, like she can't be like, oh, can't. No, but like, you, you need to like really pay attention to these things because then you know, like she needs a block for her hand if you've got her seated up on something. She, otherwise, she's gonna be like, touch the ground. Okay, she can touch the ground, but it's like, it's, it's like gonna be an effort. And she, she may actually end up leaning back in order to do that. Okay, which we don't really want her to do. Okay, all right, good. So go ahead and take your left arm up, and your left arm up, and then exhale and twist. Come across, bend the elbow. Okay, yeah, good. So okay, so go into it. Put your elbow. Yeah, okay. But 
you're not so you're just your elbows to your knees. Just your elbows. Yeah, okay. Good. So bend your knee though more. Bend your knee more. But the hip. It's really hard for me to do that because my hip flexors. Because your hip flexors are so tight. Okay. But that's what you want to do is actually bend it in just a little bit more. Yeah. And then there's less of a, a weird way to go. Okay, good. Now Look at the relationship between the torso and the leg in all of these ladies, okay? So look at Laura, how high up her leg is, okay? And then look at the other two in the front, okay? And just, you know, begin to recognize what becomes possible or impossible just based on their structure, okay? And then come on back. Okay, so just go ahead and um, sit on if you just sit up on one, is that yeah. better? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so let's do the other side. Let's do the other side. So when they bend, how much are you bending the leg in? You really want to flex the leg in, close to the chest. Your foot is where that bent leg, more in line with your sit bone and your hips. You're not in a tight, closed position, not too far apart. Then bring your left arm behind you, and inhale the right arm up, and then exhale and come across the chest. Okay, good. All right, excellent. Okay, so just put your elbow lower to your knee. Just put your elbow to your knee. Yes, much better. Okay, so I want you to look at, okay, um, just for a second, okay, Anisha, you relax. Everybody come over here, let's do this, please. Come over here, be on this side, be on this side. So first of all, I want you to look, look at this angle. Look at this angle like here, okay? And look at the angle there, okay? What I want you to see is that because of her height, how much she's pulling here now. Mm -hmm. Do you see how much she's pulling here? Yeah. Okay, come on out of it, so you can see. Okay, so if she continues to go further into the twist, Okay, and she, what she's gonna end up doing is if she's just moving from here, this whole thing is pulling here, and I don't want that to happen. I don't want this to pull across like that. Do you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I actually want you to take your arm here, like this, okay? Just your hand here. Draw your shoulder blades together, broaden your chest, sit up, and now just twist in your upper back. That is a much better twist for her. Can you see, yeah. can you see that? Okay, now once she gets that, okay, and, and really establishes that, then maybe she can bring her arm across. Without, don't pull the shoulder now, you take your arm across. Go ahead and take your arm across the leg. Yes, you keep pulling the shoulder back. Yes, and where do you want to move from? Not the shoulder, but where do you want to move from? Here, yeah. So where she wants to move from is right here, here, here. Move that in and turn that around. Yeah, the better. Do you see how? See, a lot of you in these twists are pulling that arm around. Do you, does that sound familiar? Yes. Same yeah. You're pull, and, and Carolina was coming around and adjusting a lot of you out of that. Okay. Can you feel the difference in that a little bit? Okay, good. And then just relax. Yeah. Is, that, is it dangerous to stretch your belly? I think I always kind of like to. Feeling when I was, I thought, oh, I'm getting kind of a double benefit here because I'm also like getting this shoulder stretch. But it's too much. You don't want to pull the scapula, like, because that's not what you're trying to do, actually. Because by doing that, what you're doing is you're actually rounding your back. You're rounding your back. When in actuality, you want to extend your spine and rotate. You don't want to compromising the actual exactly. Purpose. You don't want to you don't want to protract your shoulder blades and round your back and twist, because that's actually not going to be beneficial to your back, and it's also going to it's it's pulling too much in your shoulders and your scapula. Do, I, do, do some of you feel that, like yeah. pull in there? Yeah, okay. I felt it when you yeah. said it. I you felt really it when you said it. When you, when you were saying, you know, some of you were pulling your shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was just my question too, because we could clearly see that you right. were, but did you feel it? No, because until she said, you know, some of you were pulling your shoulder over, and then that was when I took the, the, the variation and grabbed my name. Yeah, because we... Like, I didn't know. Yeah, so like, I, I just tried to I thought, you know, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 okay. I have the same problem in twisted side angle.
You're right. Like, I'm like this and just the side angle. Yeah. And my spine is so far over my leg that yeah. I can't even reach. Yeah. So like just so just come to stand for a second. So just look at her body, okay? Look at how long she is here and then like how long her like her actual humorous bone is, her arm bone, okay? So when she does this pose again, so come sit, so watch now here, okay? Very different, okay? Um, and this is this really is important just in these poses, these seated dress, okay? This is this discernment, okay? So um, go go towards this way. So I want you to walk, just like look at her when she comes into the twist. First of all, look at where her knee is. Like, okay, wait, I'm gonna sit next to her because this is her, this will be fun, okay? Okay, so just watch, okay, so watch. Okay, so. Wow. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Okay, but I want you to just like really get that because this makes a difference in your twist. This really makes a difference in your truth. I mean, that is crazy. Look. It's like above my breasts. Yeah. In my mouth. <laughs> I was really a mermaid. I don't really have legs. Only when I'm in yoga. Yeah. Yeah. I have a very long spine. I don't know what I was, but I'm a monkey or something. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so watch. So when she comes into the twist, just watch because of this and then the length here. Just like what happens, like how far away she is from herself. In, in, in order for, so if we wanted to have her bind in this pose, oh my God, she'd be so miserable. She's gonna come all the way down, okay? And then come, now look, like, like, look what she has to do in order to get in there. Okay, bring this through. Yeah, like, okay, it's just not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. And it's, in this, okay, and then to come out of that. It has nothing to do with her capability. <coughs> And just everything to do with her structure. That's it. That's it. Okay? So, so for her to really benefit from the twist, it's just going to look a little differently. So that's why there's all these different variations and modifications of the pose. So this is what you were talking about. This is like, what it feels like I can leverage. Feels where you can leverage I mean, a little I have bit better. To feel that, more space. that shoulder, but I can really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't really do anything there either. Okay. Yeah. So I just was wondering. That's fine. You know, it's just another another way of doing it. Just another variation. Okay. So what is it that you're looking for exactly in these twists? When you look at somebody in these twists, what is it that you're really wanting to pay attention to? The shoulders. Right. How much? First of all, how much length they are able to have, right? And then and then what? Integrity of the shoulders. Integrity of the shoulders. So they're not. So if, if we were to take her further and she'd come across, she's gonna pull this around. Do you see, she's, she's gonna now struggle to, to get over there. And we don't want that, okay? We want the integrity of the shoulders to be in the same plane, okay? And then the majority of the movement to be seen here. Okay? Can you yeah. say something? I don't know, Judith, that you teach like that. This is something from, uh, from years in Niger. But um, what they, uh, how they teach the twist, Definitely when, when you're going to twist, wherever twist you're choosing, it's going to shift from the back, right? You, you're stabilizing your pelvis yeah. and you're keeping, you know, pelvis without the movement, but when you go into the twist, you're allowing to protect your sacrum. It's not that you're uh, taking, allowing your sacrum to go with your twist, but you're allowing the strong leg to, this, and this sigma to lengthen a little bit forward so you can go to the twist mm -hmm. and safe to wear the sacrum. It's yeah. not that you're not, you're, you're taking your entire twist, to, yes. twist with you, but there's a slight movement that you're not keeping everything here, but you're allowing this leg to go slightly forward. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's, it's really uh, helpful for people with the uh, injuries on the lower back to allow yes. a little bit of that space. And Sounds like that warrior one, actually. Okay, so, yeah, so that's actually a really good point because and let me show you how this translates in twisted triangle pose, okay? So can you do, um, do uh, twisted triangle pose? Okay, so how this translates in twisted triangle pose is that what's happening with that front leg and hip? It's going back, right? So that's actually, in essence, what's happening in the seated forward bend is you're allowing the pelvis and the hip to pull back a little bit to enable you to come a little bit more freely into the, into the twist. So this is coming back this way, okay? 
All right. So yeah, that's actually in the seated twist. Okay, so come back where you what you're saying again, Carolyn. In the, so from the back. From the yeah. So in in the twist here. Okay. So she's twisting towards that leg, and then she's allowing actually the straight leg to go forward. But as the straight leg is going forward, do you see how this hip is going? Uh, it's like, it's not that slightly, not, she's not swiveling her hips like that, right? This. Right, but she's allowing, can everybody see that? Like if she's coming to, she's allowing for that front hip to slightly go back and the straight leg to slightly go forward so that the pelvis is allowed to move a bit to create more neutrality and stability. When I'm doing this, I feel this only, only it's slightly Slight. on, this, on the sit bones, yeah. but also I feel this more on my outer hips rather than the pressure outer the lower hips. Yeah. yeah, more the outer hips, yeah. Than the lower hips. Uh-huh, yeah. So there's a sense of the outer hips compacting in, and then also, the, the leg that you're twisting towards, that hip is slightly going back and the other hip is slightly going forward. Has everybody got that? Do you know what I mean? So the leg that you're twisting towards, okay, twisted triangle pose, leg that you're twisting towards, it's going this side. Hip is going back, hip is going slightly forward, right? So now, trans, come sit, come sit next to her. So, so okay, trans, yeah. it's okay a little bit, but okay. don't but don't turn this. You, yeah, that foot doesn't turn all the way forward though. Okay, leg she's going twisting towards. Hip is slightly going back. Other leg is slightly going forward. forward. Okay, and it's not that you're. It's not that you're. You know, the other thing that can happen is people can do too much of that. Like Carolina was saying, is you can just you 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 end up disconnecting and swiveling the hips too much. Right. It's a very minimal movement to allow the pelvis to come into a neutral position and allow some freedom of, of movement in that. That's possible, yeah, because I was really trying to stay square. Yeah. And you still want to keep it. Yes, you feel yes. Like when you're allowing a little bit, you feel this more here rather than pressure here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that one of my major questions is sort of <coughs> that antagonism between trying to stabilize here and rotate. Right. And so being able to make that. Yeah, so does everybody see that? How there, there has to be a little bit of that freedom and that movement in the pelvis. I think the reason why we don't teach this so much is because yeah. we're afraid that the students move and it collapse. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's and why we're correcting. Yeah, and you will see. That, that's why we don't, I don't anyway. Some teachers might, but I don't give that instruction often. Or draw the hip back, draw the front hip back, draw the front hip uh, back and forward. I don't give that a lot because I see people doing that too much. They're really collapsing, like Caroline said. They don't more. There's more lack of stability in these poses that occurs for people. But for some of you, this information is actually really helpful. That makes where's that the channel? If you have any lower back uh, problems, does that feel different? Yeah, it's more. I can actually kick some. Yeah, yeah, a lot. <laughs> but I, I feel like standing poses is easy to. Collapse and over yes. rotate it. Yeah. When you're sitting, you don't have to work so much when you're sitting mm -hmm. because your body's heavy and it's not going to go as far because it's just running on the floor. So yeah, yeah, because you don't like yeah sit. because you, you your pelvis is fixed on the floor when you're sitting, so it's a lot harder to manipulate. Here, it's a lot easier to manipulate because you don't have it. You don't feel it. You don't feel it. Yeah, exactly. But having played hamstrings and played hips, hips, I felt it in my legs, so I felt like my legs were working, and I wondered deep, because you, did you feel in your legs at all when you were twisting on seated? Standing legs? or seated? Both, but Both. more so. Seated. I have to feel it. In your legs, how? Like, what do you mean? Like, I, I felt T-band stretching, I felt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 you will. Twisting really stretches your outer hip and your outer leg, like mad. It re like so, and some so some of you will actually if your hamstrings are really tight, if your hips really tight. Yeah, 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 exactly. You will feel also a, a really intense stretch in your hips. Well, I you know, felt it more than the twist because that's all I kept feeling. But that's okay. That that may be you know it's like not everybody's gonna too. not everybody's gonna have that. But some of you, I do too. I feel that a lot too when I do twisted triangle pose. I feel. In an, an immense amount of stretch to my outer hip and to my hamstrings, much more so than I feel in the twist, and that may be some of your experiences. And it just it just is a matter of where the tension is being held in your body, you know. Um, 
It also, I feel like if you have a lot of mobility on your upper body and the toes are easy for you, then uh, you feel this on the leg, or your leg because your legs are sta stabilizing it. I, for example, I, I can twist and twist. I have a lot of space to twist and twist yeah. and yeah. twist. Yeah. Because, yeah. You know, here I have a lot of space to twist, but and then I feel this on my legs. The yeah. twist I feel on my leg on the outer side. Of so one of the main things is that you don't want to feel a strain in the neck or in the shoulder as you're coming into these twists. Like they, there should, you know, you should feel that there is an equal amount of movement that's occurring in your thoracic spine. Where you're not pulling the shoulder around or pulling the head and the neck around. Okay. All right. Good. Is everybody good with the props? Like in really looking and seeing like the, the different. Uh, Relationship between the the torso and the I mean even look at her now bending her knees like you know it's like yeah. but it's like me it's like yeah. she's got really long limbs and so you know it just so your actual physical structure will make certain things easier and certain things harder and so you know the reason this is important to bring up is because it, it should really a light bulb should go off for you in terms of like never forcing yourself into some of these shapes because some of you have no business going into these shapes because of your structure. Do you know, okay, does that make sense? Okay, or at least in your approach to go further into the pose, you have more intelligence in how to do that. And you choose what to prioritize. And you choose what to prioritize, exactly. Right, so like what are you trying to do in this pose? Right? Okay, good. All right. Come on back to your seats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, Shira has a general question. Let's just take I'll those. Say, yeah. Okay. So my general question is: Today, these were these seated poses were considered the pink poses. Okay. Well, um, I think of these as the warmer poses for the. Things there was no real peak pose today. Oh. There was a peak section. Right. But no peak pose. This is something, okay, maybe this is a good time to do the sequencing exercise because one thing that um, that we were noticing in your sequences and your homework is that there's not a whole lot going on in the cool down section of your sequences. In the cool down section of your sequences is where all your seated postures are. Your, your seated poses, like you might have a couple of seated poses at the beginning of your sequence, right? But then the majority of your seated poses are going to be at the end of your class. That's my next question. Yes, and we haven't really gotten to seated poses until like this weekend, which is why we haven't really done a lot of them in the sequences we've been doing with you, okay? So I don't want you to think that like, okay, the peak part of your class happens and then like, you know, you do like, Caroline and I were talking about like, you do like a little chart for your not so like a little, Supine twist happening. Baby, shavasana, always shavasana. Shavasana. And then shavasana. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like your the cool down part of your class where your seated poses are should make sense based on what you did prior. Okay? Um, but it should be like a, a nice collection of seated poses that has something to do with what you did prior. So you don't always have to have a peak pose, but there's always a peak section to your class. And what's in that peak section again? It's like your inversion, your inversions, your harder back bends, arm balancing. Um, a seated pose for a beginner might be an advanced pose though, because the, the seated poses are harder in a sense, you know, um, because especially the seated forward bends. Like, what did you learn yesterday? The difference between a seated forward bend, like Pachimottanasana, and a standing forward bend, like Uttanasana. What's the main difference? Your relationship to gravity. Gravity, your relationship to gravity. So if somebody that's really tight and their hamstrings deep, and uh, deep and who else really tight in their hamstrings? Okay, right. So Pachimottanasana is like excruciating, isn't it? But you can attempt Uttanasana, yeah. right? And you can attempt Prasarita Padottanasana, but as soon as you sit down, those forward ends become a whole, a whole new game. Because the change, yeah, right. It's very different. Because what you end up, what what ends up happening is you end up gripping where you don't want to grip, like in your hip flexor is here, yeah. right? Um, and you end up bending where you don't want to bend in your in your back versus your hips. So it's a lot. Seated seated poses are definitely more advanced part of the 
practice. Um, so you cannot do a whole sequence of cetophore then? No, you don't want to do a whole sequence of cetophore then. Like you, you saw the sequence of uh, how Jim Marie talked yesterday. It's called cetophore where like last 15 minutes of the class. She right. so much work to warm up every part of the body to get better. Right. It's like today, the seated was like the end of like the last part of the class. So it's seated twist and seated four percent. It's even from the uh, energy standpoint. Like mm -hmm. your students will die. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, Saturday morning class, four beds, sitting four beds for an hour and thirty minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want to do that. You want to like that's why the standing closed section of your sequence is really where you're targeting a lot of these component parts and areas to prepare for what's coming later that's harder in your peak and in your, uh, maybe in your cool down, okay? All right, yeah. Um, do you generally do the ad work towards the beginning as part of a warm up for part of the It depends. Sometimes, depends on the level of the class, um, and it depends on what ab work you're talking about. Like I wouldn't do Navasana at the beginning of class, right? But like you could do like some supine abdominal strengthening exercises at the beginning of class, which I do sometimes, like depending on what I'm doing. Um, but depending on what it is that you're doing, like you know, Navasana is a pose that should go further, deeper in your sequence, not at the beginning. Navasana. Boat pose, Navasana. Yeah. Right? You want to do that right off the bat at the beginning of your class. Okay, so we're going to group up and do a sequence exercise together. And I think um, Thank you. 